So, hi, and um, welcome back. Just a very quick video, meant to do this a good while ago, uh, but life's been really, really busy, as many of you can imagine. Um, just a reflection on something that happened to me uh, not long after we went public. So as many of you know, um, my work involves a lot of work in schools, um, a lot of work in colleges and that, uh, around many, many different themes, generally mental health, as you would know, um, and some of those themes can be very sensitive. Little over a year ago now, um, this happened to me, and it was an experience that I know I've shared with many of you, um, and I'm just going to give you a bit of a background on what happened. And just as a reflection, I think it's a sad reflection as to where life has gone. Um, because our young people are real bastions and really well able to, you know, uh, to engage. They often have difficulties with social media and the challenges that that provides for them. Um, so anyway, just to give you a quick, quick, quick story of what happened. Um, I was asked into a secondary school. Uh, to give a talk on, again, cyberbullying and uh, netiquette online, um, something I do all the time. Um, and in a number of the talks I've given, because they were secondary school, very, very often we speak about social media as a force of negative. And, of course, from the story you know of my own life uh, with baby Evelyn, you'll know that social media was the very thing that really got the story out there. So basically, I was working with a group of secondary school students. I had two talks to do that day. Uh, in the first talk, at the end of it, and it actually only ever went to one talk, um, the students were really, really engaged. And in other schools, because the schools knew my story, um, although not all, but you know, the story had been in the media just a month before this happened. Um, I was in the school. And at the end of the talk, I alluded to my story. I didn't go into my story, um, although from what happened, I might as well. Um, but the students were very responsive. And I said to them, look, guys, social media is a, very, is a great force for good. Here is an example of, you may have heard the story of a baby who died of a cold sore. They had, some of them anyway. And I said, that was myself. And we use social media to get the story out there. That's what I said. Well, wow. Students were brilliant. <laughs> However, principal not so happy. Um, so I went for my lunch. I said I was to give two talks. When I came back, the principal was waiting for me. And she says to me, are you John Wills? And I said, yes, I am. Can I have a word with you? And with that, she proceeds to tear through me. Metaphorically speaking, of course. I was very upset. Um, and I could see her point. She said that I shouldn't have said it. Um, and I apologised for it. I apologised for any harm I could have caused. But perhaps the most upsetting thing was what was said. And the sort of narrative. And you'd wonder what the background was for why this was thrown at me. Um, because it wasn't the first school where it had been received actually really well. An actual fact from having, I've been busier than ever after, as a result um, of, I suppose, people knowing that this had happened to me. But um, I was told that the children would now believe that their killers, those who have cold sores, could believe that they would be doing harm. Um, and that now the entire afternoon would have to be spent debriefing them. Yeah, I shit you not. That was what was told to me. So, I was very upset. I apologised. I offered my services if anyone needed to talk, if any parents needed to call. You know, the responsible things you do. Um, needless to say, uh, not picked up on. That's fine. Um, but I reflected after it. And I thought of a few things. And... One of the things that I suppose came to mind was 
If you're going to level such an attack, well then, where's the evidence to say that what I did would cause trauma? Where is that evidence? If you have it, please link it for me so I can see it. But it was this idea that they couldn't hear that. These students couldn't hear that, that that would... Yes, there could have been a past history, of course, and people might be upset, but hell, it's an upsetting story. And in fact, it's that cohort, particularly that cohort, I won't go into much more detail there, but that particular cohort of people, would it would be good for them to be aware of that. However, the point was not to push my story, so I apologise for that. The point was to show the positivity in social media and how it can be such a force for good. And that's it. So, it's the end of the year now. So, sorry it took so long to throw this out. The Generation Snowflake title, um, I hope it's not too confusing for you and you see the kind of point, because it's not so much the students, I feel. I feel that behind what happened there was a paranoia that a certain cohort of people have been led to believe that if you discuss something that that could cause such a huge trauma and upset and yes we have to be mindful and I put my hands up and I apologize but really evidence please evidence for why what I did was so wrong would be great anyway thanks all I can say guys is thanks to all of you um, who've been so supportive and to all the schools you know who you are who continually get us get me in doing the training it is great um, and happy new year yeah. and uh, see you all again soon bye